Rajasthan. She holds a PhD in English literature from Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Uh, Professor Khan, Khan's area of specialization is drama and comparative literature. More than 12 scholars have been awarded PhD oh, under her supervision, and currently she has been supervising four research projects. Her area of interest and research includes performance studies, uh, prison literature, human rights, gender issues, and communication skills, especially public speaking. Professor Khan's talks at workshops and also focuses on education as a powerful tools to build and bring about social justice. Her recent work includes a book, Shaw and Iqbal, and assertion at vitalistic trends. Her many articles and papers have been <coughs> published in national and international journals of repute. She has also traveled far and wide presenting paper in various national and international conferences and seminars. She had the opportunity to visit Hong Kong, Mauritius, and United Kingdom for participating in various academic events. She is currently associated with the major project and Urdu translation of Ambedkar writings, a joint initiative by Ambedkar Foundation and Ministry of Social Justice, Government of India. Her ongoing research project is a compilation of voicing the narratives of rape victims, which shall be published shortly. She is also editor of English section Journals of Faculty of Arts, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Dear participants, other efforts at service of MU includes teacher mentor, manager of MU schools, academic advisor, members of research committee, permanent member of alumni affairs committee, MU EC member, MU women's club and humanist for she was organized through Dr. Zakir Hussain Foundation. Pentagon Excellence Award. Professor Khan is proactive in gender gender justice issues and was appointed a member of Internal Complaints Committee, ICC, which MU constitute for prevention and prohibition of redressal of sexual harassment of women's employees and studies at workplace. She was also appointed as a nodal, nodal teacher, gender champion scheme <laughs> sanctioned by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, New Delhi, and Council for Research and Empowerment of Women, CREW, confirmed her honorary membership. In addition to these, she holds the position of Life Membership Foundation for a Study of Literature and Environment, FSLE, India, and Joint Secretary of same organization at Uttar Pradesh West Zone. She is a regular participant and invited speaker in the various opinion polls and interaction on social academic national issues in print and electronic media. Dear participants, we are lucky to have ma'am to discuss on the topic of two days in this uh, our program that is understanding students diversity vis-a-vis -vis NAP 2020 gender lens. Uh, with these words, ma'am, Mike, over to you, ma'am. Uh, so kindly, uh, I would like to invite you on the dice to discuss on that topic. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Aftab Sahab, for this opportunity. I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, you are audible, very much audible. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Participants? Uh, I welcome all the participants to this uh, very important session on understanding students' diversity vis a vis NEP 2020. Uh, I think you all understand Hindustani as well with English. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Both of them, both in English okay. and Hindu. Both English and Hindustani. Uh, you all belong to different schools, different colleges, I believe. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, we uh, start. So, um, dear colleagues, uh, we uh, try to start by uh, this is the topic that I have given because they have asked me to do something on gender equality or gender uh, equity. So I have chosen this because everything now has to be, this is a pro proper program where you will have a sensitization regarding NEP 2020. 
I start because I am from literature, um, dear colleagues. So I start with a quote, and I let you know why this quote becomes so important. I'm quite content to go down to posterity as a scissors and paste man by James Joyce. We have recently celebrated 100 years of James Joyce, P.S. Eliot, and Virginia Woolf's works. Uh, those who are associated with English literature or language may be knowing that they are very important writers. But what is important in these writers is, what is important in this quotation is, that diversity is also not only related to uh, the diversity of faiths, mental abilities. When you come across a student, you will have students of, because we belong to different generation and our students belong to different generations. So we have to go down to the posterity. So if I see my position at the age of 62, then my connection with my students and then when I'm connecting with you as teachers and you will connect with a different generation students, all of us are going down to posterity. We are going down to address the diversity in classrooms of different type of students. Now what we have to do and daily we get some circulars, some guidelines, some government uh, notifications and recently we have so far had three education policies. This third one is considered to be NAP 2020. But whatever policies we get, keep in mind that we do not drive with the driving manuals. We don't teach with teaching theories. You all may be uh, agreeing to me. We have to become scissors and paste map. We have to cut, we have to add, we have to delete, we have to drop according to the needs of the target group, whatever classroom, from whatever cultural ethos we get. We have to adjust. So a teacher should also be going down to different uh, generations as a scissors and paste man. I hope you understand. Uh, if you go to the introductory slide here, see, dear colleagues, we are addressing students of higher education. And when, when I say higher education, higher education actually is a phase of transition. We are not getting school children. We are getting students of graduation, post-graduation. This is an important transition stage where the students are transforming from a learner to become professional. This is a very impressionable frame. Their individuality is developing. They are receiving impressions. Now they are not learning. They are rather going to create an impression on others. So we have to be very, very careful in handling with them. We have to create their notions and we have to be very careful. So producing better individuals, responsible and sensitive individuals is a great challenge to all teachers. We all are considered to be nation builders as well. So we have to be very sensitively we all the time talk about the smart classroom, smart classroom, but smart classroom should also become a sensitive classroom. So this generation, which we are dealing with, has, I think, the best possible resources to make the difference between better education, with higher education and opportunity. When we started our careers, now you have started your career. Look at us when we started our careers 40 years ago. We were the only resources available for our students. They used to run after us. Nowadays, we have seen the transition. No one runs after you after the class is over. Because they know they have the smartphones. They have everything. They are the users. But I don't know whether they are investing proper time to invest proper study material or not. But no one runs after you. At that time, we were the resources. We used to even look for the resources outside as students when we were students, but now the time has changed. So the challenges have also really very changed. So how can we change and challenge these stereotypes of diversity of learners, which are now in front of us? My second um, uh, part of my talk will be based more on gender equality. That's why I'm introducing that also, that the second part after any will be uh, the biological difference between sex and gender. I think you all must be knowing 
that sex is biologically assigned at birth and gender that we are nowadays addressing or gender equity or gender equality that we are addressing nowadays is actually a social construct. Kehne ka matlab hai, sari ladai bhed se nahi hai. Biological difference se nahi hai that female will become males and male will try to become, no. Our actual challenge is against bhed power. That is, how can we address discrimination? So biological differences are not to be worried. We are going to, this should be very clear in the minds of the teachers that let us not address biological sex. Let us always address the gender discrimination. So discrimination can be seen with men, women, or others of belonging to any gender. The discrimination can be really felt in these three areas. The one is health. Then we have education, mostly in education or educational opportunities. Then we come to the last, and that is social justice. How, you know, uh, society is uh, bringing or producing or creating stereotypes for men, women, and other genders separately is a great challenge at this point. How can we, within our classroom spaces, because we have only classroom space. Keep in mind, dear colleagues, we don't have, we don't run an NGO, but better than any NGO, daily we come in contact with thousands of students. Who else can have a better NGO than we have? We have daily in interaction with impressionable brains. That's why you see, teachers never grow old. At the age of 62, I always feel that I'm the same enthusiastic as I began my career with. So, uh, because we every time come in contact with young and impressionable brains, so uh, maybe physically we may be going older, but we actually from within we get new ideas. So we never go old. So students' diversity, if I do uh, decode that, and you also must be in your own context, separately, whatever places you belong to, you may also be decoding students' diversity. It can be of mental abilities. Somebody can be a slow learner, someone can be a very bright student, very intellectually oriented, someone comes from a good family, socially, someone comes from a different social strata. So we have to think and keep in mind that the greatest challenge is to address them in such a way that they feel a coexistence, so that they can feel that they are interconnected with each other. Now, diversity can also be based on faith. Faith can be any religious faith, any ideological faith or any cultural ethos. For example, I'm addressing you from AMU. AMU has an ethos where we say salam and ada. Somewhere it can be Ram Ram, it can be Satshi Akal, it can be Namaskar. But I think as teachers, we try to address this also and try to always prefer good morning, good afternoon, good evening, which is a more inclusive greeting, which also decodes the faith-based stereotypes or faith-based existence. And of course, then my last uh, part, which I'm going to focus will be the gender inclusivity. They can belong to different genders. How are you going to address them so that you can include gender inclusivity? You can also promote through your behavior, your actions, your deeds, your words, a gender equality or a gender the equity that we are nowadays talking about. Because I was talking about diversity, because I was talking about NEP, so let me start and give you a classification that's been given by NEP. And if you start the classification of the NEP, it starts from 1945 or 47, it will go for 100 years plan till 19, 2047. So if we connect the dots, you try to see. I am in conversation with you, but I am catering so many generations because I am catering for a generation GY or generation Z, but you people will come in contact with different generations. So you see generations silent before 1945. We don't have many members left, but uh, we still have uh, one lakh or two lakh members which belong to generation uh, silent. Then we have generation, very important generation. I also belong to the generation baby boomer, 1945 to 19, uh, 
65 in between those bonds. And most of the LEP or LEP policy makers are also baby boomers. Now, what is happening uh, as a Eurocentric uh, debate or a discourse that baby boomers are dangerous for economy? Let us not include them into any vision of the government or any vision of the policy, which actually is a wrong assumption and purely a Eurocentric assumption because most of our policy makers. Now, I also belong as a teacher. In three years, I'm going to retire. Now, how can I, even after retirement, of course, I'll continue to teach and I'll continue to be giving my services as a teacher, as in a communicator, or as uh, any social servant who can do anything good for academics or even uh, outside for the social benefit. But I'll continue to do that. But of course, when I'll retire, I'll not be continuously meeting my classroom students. How can I become useful? Now, I always think about that. How can I use my classroom spaces very properly? This session is a very important opportunity, very, very close to heart and soul for me as a teacher at this particular juncture of generation. Now, Generation X are those who are born from 1965 to 82. Maybe someone of you may be belonging to that. But we are addressing Generation Y, 1982 to 95. Those who are born are our students right now, actively. And then if you go to Generation Z, 1995 to 2010. Now, these this age group also is now our students. So Y and Z, to an extent, my researchers can be from Y. My students of graduation can be from Z. Your students also may be. Now, after 2010, we have Generation Alpha. Onwards, 2010. Now, my granddaughter belongs to 2010 onward generation. So she is Generation Alpha. Now, I can't directly teach students of Generation Alpha. But by giving you my vision, dear colleagues, you will come in contact with Generation Alpha. You will also come in contact with Generation Beta who will be born in fully digital world after 2025. I may not be alive, but my interaction will remain alive in your memory if I can cast some impression on your minds. In this way, generation baby boomer can be connected with you or through you or via you with generation alpha and beta as well. That's why this classification becomes, or this diversity also becomes because we have seen the transition. Our generation has seen lot many transitions. We may be useful in giving you some insights which purely digi digital world generation may not be able to do that. So my interaction with you is covering so many generations. Generations that you are teaching, generations that I have taught I'm connecting with you, generations you are going to teach will also be connected by the way, if you remember something which I am talking today, you may be connecting my vision with Generation Beta as well. So I think interestingly, uh, because this is a program on sensitization and you must be getting the objective, so I'm not going to stay on this slide along. Uh, holistic education, cultural integration, these are all the diversities is actually the objective of education policy. 2020. Why this is important? Because when Britishers made policies, they have created a canon of English uh, language, culture, and they have killed almost, or they have uh, sidelined all our cultural diversity with their own political agenda. But this uh, policy is actually trying to include in its uh, objective the holistic education, the cultural integration, the skill development, the promotion of languages and arts, even those arts which have been forgotten from small regions have been included into this vision. Experiential learning, we have experiential learning, we have professors of practice now. If you have any skill which you have mastered, you may be appointed. We have flexible, negotiable curriculums. So this is also the highlight of uh, education policy and its objectives. We have integration of technology. But at, at the same time, we have also the integration of uh, Jeevan Darshan. We'll talk about that a little later on. And then we have community 
engagement. So with one student, you will be engaged with the entire community that student belongs to. If you see education policy after independence, the first, so we got independence in 1947. Our first education policy was introduced in 1968. And then the second one was in 1986. NEP 2020 is after the canon of the Britishers or the impact of the canon of the Britishers. This is the first uh, NEP 2020, which has included the revision of these two policies. But this revision is with a vision. And this vision is adding of Indian perspective to this particular policy. You see, we have a lot of political propaganda. We have many critiques of this policy. Uh, we also have uh, many you know, party agendas and all that. This policy has this agenda or that agenda. But apart from every agenda, this policy actually has added Indian knowledge system, which is one of the most important, which was really missing in these two policies, because those earlier two policies were canon operated. Now, Indian knowledge system talks about Gyan, Vigyan, and Jeevan Darshan. Gyan, Vigyan, and Jeevan Darshan, uh, Jeevan Darshan especially, Gyan, Vigyan was earlier also the part of our previous education policies also. But actually, Jeevan Darshan was missing. And if we teach our students of uh, diverse backgrounds, or because the target of NEP 2020 is that it is going to be achieved in 2047. Now, as far as Jeevan Darshan is concerned, I just give you an example that uh, uh, an Indian origin based uh, high profile executive of technology who was living in USA with $1 million you know, uh, dollar villa. He was successful, he was healing there, but he shot his wife eight times strangled his two twin sons and finally committed suicide. He had Gyan, he had Vigyan, but what he was missing was actually Jeevan Darshan. Jeevan Darshan is, he did not understand the purpose of life. He did not understand the philosophy of life. So education policies, which are being revised and especially NEP 2020, in every classroom, whatever knowledge or subject that you are teaching to students of diverse backgrounds, you see, we talk about context, we talk about the text, but in the Eurocentric or canon based uh, policies, we miss the very important target, and that is consequence. What is the consequence of education, which uh, this high profile technician or high profile executive has missed? And that consequence was what will you do after? If you don't get one, uh, if your one plan is unsuccessful, 30, 40 students have committed UC suicide in Kota. The reason is they didn't have any plan B. They didn't have any other purpose of life ready with them. Other philosophy of life ready to help them give survival, joy, and happiness. So it's very important because these you know, young and diverse group of students, dear colleagues, they are facing mental health issues. Even in young age, they are struggling with depression. They are again and again, I mean, they are suffering from alienation. So many problems they are suffering. They need sharing. So I again and again urge all of you that the spread of this NEP as an educator, like I become a facilitator and assess that how can I make my classroom space more useful? I urge the same to you to make your classroom spaces very, very useful so that student diversity and gender inclusivity that we are promoting and we are trying to cater for can become really important for you. So don't teach only syllabus. Try to sometimes talk and talk to the students and try to give them sharing, try to give them a kind of commitment and belief that you are with them. This makes a lot of difference. You see, students very past class ke baad mein bhi aate hain. Ho sakta hai, kahi na kahi padhane mein hi koi sensitivity unhone dekhi hoti hai. So, we can discuss problem with our personal problems. This confidence can be able when you try to connect with them. Connect in such a way that you can transform them. You can give them healing. You can give them a confidence that nobody is going to listen to you. I will be there to listen to you. I will be there to counsel you. This is something very important. 
dear colleagues if you remember i started with you with the word dear colleagues i could have used ladies and gentlemen but i didn't use that this is a single word but how it is connected to gender language and communication now this is my second part gender inclusivity so if we unpack these questions why not ladies and gentlemen why should we use the word colleague which colleague male or female no colleague word is not having male or female colleague word includes how many genders how many genders male female others transgender trans women does colleague carry hierarchy which colleague colleague of a school colleagues who are teaching in a school those who are teaching in a college those who are teaching in a central university or deemed university or a private university i didn't talk about any hierarchy because colleague words is giving so many answers so consciously use colleagues when you address your colleagues and consciously use the word not boys and girls but say students dear scholars dear students because from addresses you know we start the consciousness of gender equality so ladies and gentlemen address only male and female if i would have used ladies and gentlemen it could have only addressed male and female ho sakta hai koi other ho ho sakta hai koi transgender ho ho sakta hai kisi ka orientation is towards psychological orientation towards any other gender ho why should we not include them so colleagues erases biases and binaries binary is only male and female when you address colleagues it erases all biases that i am not biased towards ladies being a female teacher i am not biased towards gentleman or men because i am a male teacher all biases are killed all biases are addressed so colleagues include both male female and other so consciously use these terms it dismantles hierarchy it also dismantles hierarchy upward forward onward we all are serving the same cause of education dear colleagues neither male or female or other we dismantle all hierarchy hum sab ek biradari ke kahin bhi padha rahe ho we all are addressing and involved in the same so keep that tag in your mind all hierarchies nahi main to ye hu main to bahut badi university se no no nothing we all belong to and everybody belongs to our fraternity hum sab comrades hain हम सब फ्रेटर्निटी को बिलोंग करते हैं सो एवरीबडी इज माई कलीग वेदर आई एम वर्किंग विद यू और नॉट यू ऑल आर माई कलीग्स यू ऑल आर माई को वर्कर्स यू ऑल आर माई यू नो फ्रेंड्स इन द सेम मिशन सो आई एम टॉकिंग टू यू बिकॉज यू बिलोंग टू डिफरेंट जनरेशन बट डजेंट मैटर वी ऑल बिलोंग टू द सेम कॉज वी ऑल टूगेदर विल स्ट्राइव टू मेक अ बेटर इक्विटेबल सोसाइटी ना लुक एट द फैक्टर्स dear colleagues knowledge is protection so how can we give gender equality what are the factors responsible or what are the factors as preparation we should keep in mind knowledge is the best possible protection now you should have knowledge and awareness from where gender equality can come from laws it can come from uh, your knowledge about uh, different gender discourses different gender policies different gender stresses so if you have best best possible knowledge and awareness the sensitization will work very properly you should also understand that your students who are from diverse groups they should feel accountable you have to make them accountable you have to make them sensitive and you also have to make them accountable accountability you know starts from yourself make yourself accountable make your family accountable why that don't always say give me gender justice or provide me empowerment if you are a woman no wo din khatam ho gaye ke hum baat kar rahe the promoting women empowerment or promoting gender justice ab promoting nahi accountability has to be provided to you hame accountable hame jawabdeh banana hai systems ko bhi banana hai apne workplaces ko bhi banana hai sabse pehle khud ko banana to your family to people around you otherwise you are not your students with whom you every day come in contact with make them accountable that you are a learner and don't address them their colleagues as only students address them as agents of social change they can bring a social change outside the classroom space as well so make your classroom spaces to create a personality and individuality of these students don't always become a master or a controller 
नहीं नहीं मैं बड़ा हूँ आप छोटे हैं आपकी कोई पर्सनैलिटी नहीं आपकी कोई औकात नहीं This type of you know discourse always kills the individuality of the students. Don't create because they'll be very harmful to you. Courage should also be there. As a member of so many grievance agencies, I have seen that there are many rules available, there are many provisions available, but women do not have the courage. We should have a solidarity so that we can break silence. If my friend cannot break silence, let me provide solidarity through my conversation to her and courage to her. So people around us, self of mine around me or within me, my family, my society, my institution, my nation, for everyone, for every agency should help me in giving me the courage through policies and through solidarity and through conversation. We should also know about laws. We should know about rules and provisions. We should also have conversation, solidarity, and better society. If someone is alone, at least have a conversation with her. Conversation, you know, otherwise, conversation given I know that people cultivate death wish sometimes. Sometimes they feel like uh, harming themselves. So conversations are very, very important. Social media, because social media is important. Social media is, or we all are, you know, receiving or creating a perception of reality only through social media. We don't know what actually reality is. Our entire perception social media based on the jar. So it's very important for us to understand that diversity, unhealthy human relationship. Let us have very positive, very good, very you know, um, uh, very that kind of solidarity and relationship where we can produce a better. society so this kind of understanding is also very very uh, important this kind of mindset and sensitivity is very important for uh, teaching gender equality the most uh, important and popular term and a movement was called feminism you should know about that that the rights of women or the rights of every gender so after feminism started having or talking about the rights of uh, people belonging to different genders then uh, feminism was later on followed by the gender studies feminist scholar vina mazunda has pointed out that women studies actually became precursor to gender studies and then we have women studies we have gender studies so in your institution and colleges also you must be having but this term which talks about equal rights and opportunities of different genders is actually feminism and it became a very important impactful baat ke jitne bhi development aap dekhenge they all were based on so you should know about that uh, some important terms uh, um, also should be known by you and the one is gender identity gender inclusivity gender sensitization i think every institution every society every you know institution or organization around or every individual should know that they have a gender identity um maine pehle bhi aapko bataya gender is a social construct and you should be very clear about that that sex is simply male female binary is simply a biological construct sex always refers to biological differences between male and female which is based on the biological uh, anatomy of a body sex is usually assigned at birth but after birth you can have any psychological orientation and then your real identity in a society is constructed by others and it becomes your gender identity that you have to dress like this you have to uh, because you are a woman you have to dress like that because you are a male or a man you have to dress like if you are other you will also be identified by that gender differently and uh, after that binary we have transgenders we have other gender fluidity we have gender queer we have bi gender we have a gender people so there are so many and you see the recent development from gender binary male to female to we have developed a different uh, spectrum and the spectrum is known as lgbt qia when we were students we only knew about lgbt now we have qia queer also and transsexual asexual and then we have and in the time to come there can be xyz added 
में भी प्लस लगा हुआ है सो देर कैन बी मेनी अदर जेंडर आइडेंटिटीज टू बी इंट्रोड्यूस सो वी शुड नो अबाउट दैट स्पेक्ट्रम एज ए डाइवर्सिटी and if we know about that the, the knowledge will become the first environment that we know about that spectrum so we are not going to be traditionally addressing all the time only the binary male to female or female to male we have to include in our every action words and thoughts lgbtqia plus if x y z in your life time in your career you may see the development of this spectrum so be very very consciously clear about that that gender equality is not only limited to male and female to the binary it's also expanded to the spectrum and that knowledge is important for a teacher so we started our uh, first layer of conversation by giving you one very important example that is why i used the word colleague why not ladies and gentlemen thus the word colleague is used with an intention very deliberately it was used to put forward gender equality erasing gender binary evolving gender inclusivity and gender neutral language in communication because i am associated with language and literature so i can say that but every teacher who is teaching in a classroom either in hindi urdu or english or any other regional language will always come in contact that use of language should be balanced and should promote gender equality it should not kill or it should erase gender binary not to promote gender binaries or to promote any discrimination in the classroom so teachers have to be really very very careful about that uh now we go to gender stereotypes roles and attributes you see these are the traditional stereotypes whenever we talk about gender equality the most important thing that becomes a hurdle that becomes really a challenge to us is that society is prevailing with so many stereotypes and the students who come from diverse backgrounds to your classrooms they bring different gender stereotypes now stereotype roles to pehle se the wo hai do not represent certain jobs as only appropriate or held by women or men examples to be avoided for example only a male or female can be a professor or a politician or a teacher but recently a transgender has also been appointed a principal and the research is going on under me on that principal who is an author also uh, she is manobi bandupadhyay so professors are men and elementary teachers are women ye men women ki dichotomy traditional hai jo main aapko bata rahi politicians are men and women are only politicians wife nowadays women can also be politicians after nari shakti vandana adhiniyam which was recently been passed by the parliament we have a proper reservation of women in politics and their participation is to be witnessed so housework is the duty of women and an option or out of question for men but working men are now uh, working at home as well and if both men and women are working or both partners are working they are cooperating like the scientists are men and secretaries are women gone are those days but these were the stereotypes doctors are men and nurses are women women are doctors also women are ceo also women have broken the glass ceilings and women and transgenders and belonging to any gender they are reaching to various heights so we have to talk about these examples in the classroom job so we have to bring and break change and challenge these stereotypical notions which with which students come to your classrooms do not represent women and men as possessing stereotypical gender attribute for example men are independent and women are dependent independence or dependence is not gender bound quality it can be even men can be independent there are so many unemployed men who are dependent on women who are employers or those who are dealing in society so these are all you know notions men are admired for their accomplishments women for their physical attributes people always have this stereotype that women should, should be appreciated only for their bodies not for any other intellectual or uh, any other accomplishment which they have but administrative qualities which they have but this is also stereotypically notion men are active women are passive this is also something very stereotypical women who can work at home and come and work at a workplace also 
most of the women teachers will agree to me that they are more active even to their workplaces. So there's hardly any stigma. So men are ambitious, women are modest, no. Women can also be dangerously ambitious. And men are also ambitious. So to be ambitious or to be modest is something men can also be modest. This can be a crisscross. But these are the traditional stereotypes with which students enter to your classroom. Even te teachers enter into the colleges and universities with these notions for their co-workers, which should be systematically and properly dismantled and crumbled. And this can be this can happen if you have an active interaction. So men are leaders and women are followers, born are those days. So these are contemporary. These were the traditional stereotypes. These are the contemporary stereotypes. Each one of us sometimes employ stereotypes in our thoughts, words, and action. Even after being so educated, whether we are teachers, whether we are educators, whether we are employers, whether we are administrators, whether we are politicians, or we are interacting with any classroom students, we sometimes have these stereotypes in our thoughts, in our words, in our action. I just shared here with you one of my school time memory, and it had a great impression on my mind. Aapko yaad hoga, school mein humse koi bhi kaam karaya jata tha, hum bahut privileged feel karte the. That the teacher is giving us some task or job. Ja kar upar se ye le aao, ja kar copies ikhata kar do. So I still remember, ki fourth floor se ja kar kuch saman ya copies lani thi. I offered myself to the teacher, but a boy was standing close to me. So the teacher, no, the boy will go. You keep standing. As if uh, climbing four stairs was something very challenging and difficult. I was fit to go four stairs, but she did not allow me. Or mere against, mere past to lada khada tha, itna marial tha, usme koi willingness bhi nahi thi, chalkar cheez bhag kar lani thi. The task was given to him. And this created a kind of, you know, impression on my mind that just because I was uh, not a boy, I was a girl, I was not being given. So I was physically fit, which was willingness. Now, where is it? I remember that teacher. That's why we should also think that whenever we allot something to our students, we should not go for any discrimination of this type because it gives a very deep-seated impression and prejudice in the mind, which will be difficult to overcome in the life to come. I still remember that incident. Challenging and overcoming the stereotypes is essential to ensuring an equal, inclusive, and compassionate society. Challenging, overcoming, or erasing these stereotypes is something very essential. We can systematically do that in our classrooms or when we work together with our student for any program, for any cultural event, or any tour, or any excursion we go with them. We can really give them a feel that you are included. You are a part of a compassionate society. Teach them solidarity. You are educated. You can press a helpline number and call the police or call some assistance because she does not belong to you or he does not belong to you. You are not going to take an action. It's something bad. A compassionate society should also be. So give them such examples. So students are constantly subjected to stereotypes based on their nationality, region, caste, gender, disability, sexuality, religion, color, race, and social physical appearance. They are, you know, they are subjected to so many such kind of ye Bihari hai, ye is region ka hai, ye is caste ka hai, ye high caste ka hai, ye low caste ka hai, to ye to criminally hoga. A low income group se aata hai, to ye to chori hi hoga. Ye jo kya hai, all these are the stereotypes. Class mein koi chori hui, to humne kisko pakar liya? The person who comes from a low income group. Because this is a stereotype in our mind. Arre, ye jo chote income ka hai, wo hai, isne zarur chori kar li ho. Jabki aisa nahi hota, they are very, sometimes they are very, it has nothing to do with that. Try to dismantle that and work logically. Common stereotype is that individuals from low income backgrounds are less trustworthy. And they are criminal. Yeah, so all that should be very systematically addressed in the classroom very, very consciously. If you see gender stereotypes 
and how can we change and challenge them? These are the gender stereotypes, and I have noted down these few as selected examples from gender combating or combating the gender stereotypes, the manual that was released by Supreme Court very recently. That women are passive. So, I know, women are passive, or to be passive is nothing to do with gender. Anyone can be passive, anyone can be active. Women are compassionate. No, compassion is not only limited or a, a brand quality only of women. Men can also be compassionate. I mean, this is a kind of a question mark on the agency of males and men that they cannot be, or any other transgender that he or she or the other cannot be compassionate. So, Compassion has nothing to do with only women, and no decision should be based on these stereotypes. Unmarried women are not capable of taking any decision. Unmarried women are immature. Marriage has nothing to do with marriage can be or marriage age can be I mean, defined by law or the age to cast vote can be, but the uh, the taking decision and uh, if someone gets married at the age of 30, even before that, the person's de decision and judgment cannot be trusted. This is something very illogical. This is something which is a stereotype. If you have not been married, you can't be sensitive to any child. If you are not a mother, you can't do this. You can't be responsible. All that is something which is a stereotype. It should be changed and cherished. Working mothers are less competent in within the work area. You must have seen that people have a work child care leave they are not competent. Mothers are administrators, they are taking care of the entire nations, they are politicians, they are so working with the mothers are equally competent. If working fathers are competent, working mothers, so these uh, stereotypes should be challenged. You have to work equally with equal competence and never give any excuses on the workplace that you are late because this is a problem or that is your uh, so that that should also be addressed in a proper way women who do not cry those who are not depressed or appear suicidal they are liars about harassment with me many harassment cases come to me and people say the committee members there are the first hand experience the committee members who sit with me they often say this is something which is simply a stereotype. Every gender or every individual has different you know, psychological traits. Everyone has a different mechanism and outcome to so many depressions and so many uh, problems they face. So we should not treat them equally. Everyone should look cry or depressed or uh, uh, suicidal, then only we will consider or uh, agree that some harassment has occurred. Otherwise, they are liars. This is, this should be systematically addressed. I often do it. I think you all, whenever you uh, settle any case or take a judgment, be very, very careful. Women who say no to sexual advances are shy. They mean to say yes. Many things are happening in social media and so many other. Yeah, I thought she said yes. I said, that, did she say yes or no? If she said no, clearly no means no. We have all seen the film Pink in which they said no is the smallest word in the vocabulary, but no means no. These type of uh, um, stereotypes should not be labeled on or designed on any woman or man separately or equally. Men are unable to control their sexual desires. Now, this is something very, very prevalent in society. See, controlling your desires is the same thing with men, women, or any other gender. If you say men are unable to control their sexual desires, that means you are putting a question mark on their agency as a man, as a gentleman. They can also control in the same manner as others can control. So, this is something very uh, commonly. I mean, misconceived notion and, you know, men's agencies are that way, discounted and undermined. This should not happen for men as well. So good women prefer death rather than being raped. So rather being raped only or harassed or uh, molested or threatened, 
Before that, you know, they feel that they are harassed, they will prefer death. Such kind of a stereotype should be challenged because otherwise nobody will survive after harassment or after molestation. We have to help them understand. If you give them the counseling properly or have such conversations around these people who face harassment and trauma, that you are not a sinner. You have done nothing. You are a victim. You are a good person. You have simply been victimized. So your choosing death will be simply unreasonable uh, on your part as well as it is not justified because you have done nothing wrong. Somebody who has done wrong should be a rapist should that way be blamed and irrigated, not the victim. Ye jo stereotype bane mein, this has to be really talked about how to end a bad marriage. Always we tell our students or our younger lots of women and all. Yeah, student hai, ko, she's 21 years old or a researcher. Hai. Uh, I am looking for a kya koi proper match hai, mere paas raat tak, these phone a jayenge. But if I say my student or a researcher, she has had an early bad marriage, she wishes to end a bad marriage, nobody will call me. Nobody will give me a conversation or a piece of advice. Is tarah ke hamare yaan koi baat hi nahi hoti. Hame tayyad karke bejana chahiye apne students or young uh, minds ko ke if God forbids, achha ho ke unke saath na ho, but God forbids if they face a bad marriage, they should not endlessly suffer in that. Quality of existence is very important. We should give them a conversation, solidarity and sharing that if anything happens unfortunately try to understand the mechanism through conversation and legal aids so that how can you end your bad marriage and you should not suffer physical and other type of domestic violence so continuously which is killing you in cheezon par baat karna in cheezon ki bhi mental preparation nahi aapko shaadi nibhani hai aur kuch bhi ho jaye mar kar hi wahan se nikalna hai ye sab cheeze stereotypical mindset se dekar nahi bhejna hai if it turns out to work hard to make your marriage successful and if God forbids the partner is doing injustice with you, physical and other trauma you are receiving, then try to learn the ways to end and you are with them. So these kind of, you know, solidarities. I often talk to my students like that and give them a confidence that if anything happens, we will try to give counseling and save first and then if the need arises, we will give you a proper sharing, a proper solidarity. Now, this is the handbook I have given you. I am selecting a few things for you quickly. Uh, how uh, alternative language is preferred, stereotypical promoting chaste women, no, only women. Koi pati vrata, koi asa yoman, koi vasi urat, koi career woman, nahi hoti. Career men bhi hote hai, unke aage kyun nahi lag raha? Why career women? Most of the women have their own careers. So prostitution is also to be prohibited. Uh, this manual is available. Concubine, rakhel hai, ye hai, derogatory words and no, nothing like that. Women with whom a man has had romantic or sexual relations outside of marriage. So the burden falls on men as well. Dutiful wife, faithful wife, good wife, bad wife, obedient wife, pati prata, no, wife. Wife is a wife. Jo bhi usme hona hai, hona hai. Easy virtue. So these type of preferred expressions is given by that. See, fallen woman, ye giri hui aurat hai, ye bigri hui aurat hai, ye bad woman hai, aisa kuch nahi hai. Women are, so all this, ye Indian hai, ye Western hai, all hierarchies are to be all. Ye men in carrying you, this manual has been released by Supreme Court 2023. Lady like mistress used uh, all these are replaced now. No slut, no spencer. You call them unmarried women, call them women, call don't call them whore or prostitute or unwed mother. Mother is a mother, whether in a living relationship or any relationship. If she chooses to give birth to a child, she should be a mother. Whore should be replaced by mother. A woman of loose morals, easy virtue. So, it is sorry, attached, stereotypical, is erased and replaced by preferred language. 
very important initiative by Supreme Court of India. And this should be known and should be brought to the classroom. Gender and classroom language communication should also be very, very important in order to promote gender equality and gender justice. And teachers' behavior, again and again, I'm saying is very, very important. Language is an essential tool in communication. Uh, it is communication that shapes the child's it promotes sensitivity. It articulates consciousness with regard to the English language. It is possible, but in other languages also, it is quite possible if you become uh, conscious. Uh, so in order to promote gender justice through language, all dear colleagues, please, please try to use linguistic equality, which comes in these language terms. Use gender fair language. Use gender inclusive language, some examples as I have given to you. And I started with dear colleagues. You also address, you also have these type of inclusive greetings and addresses, non sexist language, anti sexist language, which should not promote any male female binary or exclude transgenders and others. Try to see this problem also because uh, most of this segregation is based on gender. These subjects are choices of uh, these genders and these streams should be chosen by these. Try to give them proper career counseling. That if you have an interest, you can choose any subject. It can be social science, it can be depending on your interest, not depending on your gender. So the choices of career and subjects should not be based on gender. It should be based on the interest and the knowledge that you provide to them. So promotion of this kind of subject segregation should be strictly avoided. If you are attempting this, at least plan B should be ready with you so that you should not have any depression. You should have multiple choices. Being an engineer and doctor or belonging to any gender, you can have even a man can have interest in or belonging to any gender. You can have an interest in art and uh, other performing arts also, dance also, music also. It's not limited to that. And new education policy is promoting performing arts as well. For the engineering students, for the science students, for any stream students. Now today you can study chemistry with history. You can study any language with any language or you can study one discipline with the other optional and uh, vocational courses. So uh, the portrayal of females in subjugated position and professions should also be avoided. They should they can choose anything according to their choice. Campuses should also be seen through um, a gender lens that how can these uh, a uh, higher education and 48% female labor participation, global gender gap report should be brought to the classroom. Gender facilities should be enhanced. Gender champion schemes should be. So all these should be in the campuses so that we can promote. There should be helpline numbers. There should be national commission for women and their numbers should be properly advertised. Women helpline number in UP is 1090, women helpline, domestic abuse, students and child helpline, National Human Rights Commission, transgender distress helpline should be properly advertised. Challenges women face, every gender face, but more properly, women face at university and colleges are gender discrimination, sexual harassment, unequal representation in leadership roles, stereotypes and stereotype threat. All these, you know, things they face in colleges and universities. So within our classroom spaces, we try to give them a confidence that they can come and share with us anything. Harassment against women in colleges and universities. Nearly four out of ten girls reported of being bullied by their fellow weeks, compared to under one in ten boys. Female students are harassed, travel, uh, street sexual harassment, molested. Male students, male students often pass jeering remarks, comments. You try to, you know, supervise that. You try to give them a, a confidence that without any consent, you should not do that. Or you should avoid using such body shaming, 
these females should feel safe in their spaces and in your presence or even when you are not present trying to address your male students female students and other gender students also in the same manner not only the classroom spaces uh, we witness crimes we also witness cyber crime against women uh, every day we see such kind of that they create anonymous identities and start the harassment of male females equally so it can be the harassment of uh, women more and sometimes male students also face male teachers also face and female teachers also face so stalking, harassment, cyberbullying, online sexual exploitation, identity theft, non-consensual sharing of intimate images, online grooming of sexual exploitation. Active consent, Kevina, you cannot give any message to anybody. I remember as uh, a grievance, as an agency member, I received a complaint by a girl that at 12 a.m. or 12 or after 12 at night, a boy has threatened her and sent an image of a pistol to her. Now she got threatened. Yes, this is online uh, harassment. So without any consent, don't try to indulge in any conversation and communication. Be very careful in your social media communication because social media has a memory. It can be produced as an evidence. So one should be very careful in all communication, especially social media communication and this kind of training and uh, understanding should be given media you know uh, around us creates not many such because our perception of reality is guided by media so media sometimes give such uh, objectification of female body and such advertisement we all come across in daily but media has also started showing uh, i was recently watching an advertisement of Bhima jewelry is coming a link behind the air, um, that they have made a trans woman who became from male to female after uh, reassignment surgery. They have made that woman who became uh, a male to female, uh, that trans uh, transgender, they made the brand ambassador of their jewelry uh, brand. And Bhima Jewelry is a brand in. And everybody was giving, even we, you see in this advertisement, cross-generational acceptance to this trans woman. So that kind of, you know, uh, media is also. So see and select proper media and see their impact on the life. Now comes the important question. What is the role of a teacher when you see so much, you know, discrimination, violence, and so many legal and other provisions available and at hand, you see in active classrooms, not many such examples. What is the role of a teacher? Teaching should be of this nature that it can help students resist wrongdoing. I was reading a news, dear colleagues, and this was alarming that in Madras on Teachers Day, I was reading this news that a researcher helped supervisor in killing his wife. education? We created such puppets or such students who had no justice loving heart. They could not resist even the wrongdoing of a teacher. But this is also so. Is our uh, teaching or the role of a teacher is that we should create a kind of resistance in them against unjustified behaviors around them. Otherwise, the society will become corrupt. Teaching to erase stereotypes. So we should not create such examples. We should not create stereotypes by our teaching. We should not promote stereotypes as we have seen stereotypes. Teaching to unpack. Try to unpack your teaching in such a way. Unpack means you don't have to study the syllabus. You have to open your mind, your mind, your sympathy, emotion, sharing, solidarity. Then only you can create a proper learner or a proper diversity can be addressed by. And of course, teach them inclusivity. Try to include everyone in your conversation, in your classroom addresses. Teachers can play an important role in shaping their ideas, beliefs, which can change the thought pattern of students. You have an important impressionable brains in your hands. 
be very sensitively conscious of your duty and your responsibility as a teacher. Because a teacher is known by the examples he uses. A teacher must be aware of the fact that his her every action, every attitude, every behavior, every perspective, every approach, every manner, every outlook, every mindset will help you shape students' gender role. यहाँ भी एक छोटा सा एनिग्रोथ अपनी क्लासरूम का 40 साल हो गए हैं पढ़ाते में। I remember one day when I was teaching a play and the hero had to kill the heroine in a very unjustified, defenseless manner. Othello was the name of that play. The hero uh, killed his uh, death scene when I started teaching. So I had tears in my mind or in my eyes. Um, I was on the verge of tears and I told my students and students were uh, 40 to 60 male students class. It was. I said, I can't teach it now because I'll teach it tomorrow. And I was on the verge of tears and I came to my room and I sat there. Uh, believe me, Karenge, at least 40 students came to my chamber and they assured me, Madam, please don't be so sad. We really uh, promise you that we will do no injustice to any female or any woman who will enter in our life in any role. Us din aisa laga jase, salary se bhi zada satisfaction mil gaya hai. Your communication is understood. Your teaching is understood. Dear colleagues, just increase communicative competence and try to teach them that you were not generated. Even I was not generating sympathy and pity for the dying heroine. I was creating a kind of consciousness of human rights of a woman. So why was she uh, dying? Uh, defenseless death. Kill me tomorrow. Give me time to pray again. But the hero did not. heroine imaginary character. But her pathos, her unjustified killing actually has entered into me. And I think we have become so gender sensitive. You try also to make your assignments uh, so sensitively attached to your heart and soul. Measures karne ki zarurat hai. Enhancement, kuch bahari measures bhi karne padeng. Uh, enhancement of enrollment in higher education. Equal proportion, create a conducive ecosystem around you. Identify the emerging domains. Train girls for in-demand futuristic skills. Women should be encouraged to take subjects like artificial intelligence, data analytical, cloud computing, digital, yes, train women for leadership role, develop leverage industry academia, connect. Yes, sorry, laws details uh, I have very limited time given to me. I can endlessly keep talking about these uh, issues because they're very, very close to my heart and soul. I use my classroom spaces as gender sensitization tools. And I urge all my colleagues also to do the same. You see, there will be a marked difference in the quality of students. They will forever be indebted to you. They will forever be really obliged to you. These are laws available. But keep this in mind that major social changes have not occurred only by parliamentary bills and laws. They have occurred because of good literature, because of good teacher-student relationships, because of these classrooms where you are right now teaching. There are also many big changes from there. You can change your interaction with a small one. So don't only wait for these laws too. It has also its role, but at the same time, these are not the only survivors. These are not the only factors who can bring change. You can bring change. I can bring change. Yes, I connect once again. We are about to complete our inning. I'm very happy that we are interacting with the generation of such teachers who will come in contact with Generation Beta and connect our vision also with Generation Beta. So um, these uh, laws, sexual harassment of women at workplace, prevention, prenatal diagnostic techniques, constitutional roles and equality. So just gender equality, actually, we are talking about 
that is not only our demand, but it is our constitutional right. Constitutional right of every gender to gain equality. So we should know about our constitution as well. And these are the socializing and sensitizing agents who can bring change. I have highlighted teachers. Learners can bring change because every teacher can be a learner as well. Parents are also having their own role. You are a teacher, but you can be a parent. You are a teacher in some way, but you can be a learner in some other way. Your religion, your particular faith, your music around you, your co-workers, your colleagues, your uh, employers around you, the cultural, many you know impressions around you, many regions, diversity and people around you, impressions around you, and media that is having different kind of biased and unbiased media around you, you are free to socialize. You are free to sensitize your students and become a change of sensitization so that whenever you address your students, you will not only address learners, but you will address agents of social change. For gender sensitization, build a value-based work culture, which is properly belonging to inclusion and mutual respect. आप सिर्फ अपने स्टूडेंट्स को मैं बार बार कह रही हूँ मुद्दे की बात ये है आप अपने स्टूडेंट्स को इतना सिखा दीजिए लर्न टू रेस्पेक्ट डिफरेंसेस अब किसी भी तरह का डिफरेंस हो डिफरेंस इन जेंडर डिफरेंट इन एनी डाइवर्सिटी सोशल पॉलिटिकल मेंटल ट्रेन देम दो सो दैट दे कैन लर्न टू रेस्पेक्ट डिफरेंसेस दे विल बिकम सेंसिटिव क्रिएट अ कंड्यूसिव train you in the ability to have to uh, empower all your information students and keep in mind active consent in, in intimate relationships it is going to be a challenge daily students bring such problems active consent ka matlab shayad aap samajhte honge koi sedative pila kar ya kisi aise usme aapne kisi ki sexual consent le li ya kisi aur tarah se dara dhanka ke uski consent le li wo consent nahi hota consent and relationship should be active and consensual otherwise it will not be considered legally a consent conduct awareness campaigns and workshops on topics such as sexual harassment consent by sender intervention and personal safety aapki consent usi aadmi ke liye usi relationship ke liye aaj ho sakti hai 5 minute baad agar aapki nahi hai law considers that so these kind of complications or ye jo barikiyan hain ये थिन लाइंस ऑफ डिफरेंस शुड बी टॉक्ड इन द क्लासरूम दैट कंसेंट इज समथिंग और एक्टिव कंसेंट इज समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंप्लीमेंट एन एफिशिएंट एंड कॉन्फिडेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग मैकेनिज्म इंसिडेंट ऑफ हरासमेंट कोई एफआईआर नहीं लिख पा रहा है तो आप उसकी हिंदी में लिख दीजिए किसी और लैंग्वेज में इंक्वायर्ड है क्रिएट अ सॉलिडारिटी एंश्योर दैट द मैकेनिज्म फॉर रजिस्टरिंग कंप्लीट इज सेफ एक्सेसिबल एंड सेंसिटिव अक्सर हम लोग सोचते हैं कि अक्सर कंप्लेन एजेंसी सोचती हैं कि आए नहीं कंप्लेन तो हमें कुछ करना ही नहीं पड़ेगा लेकिन ऐसा नहीं होता एज मेनी कंप्लेन आई बिलीव एज ए प्रिजाइडिंग ऑफिसर ऑफ इंटरनल कंप्लेन कमेटी एज मेनी कंप्लेन वी रिसीव वी आर वेरी हैप्पी वी फील कॉन्फिडेंट दैट दी स्टेक होल्डर्स हु आर ब्रिंगिंग कंप्लेन कंप्लेनेंट्स दे हैव अ ट्रस्ट इन अस वी आर एन आइडियल वर्क प्लेस के हम में इतने लोग क्योंकि हर कंप्लेन में प्यूनेटिव एक्शन इज नॉट नीडेड we can take a prohibitive action also we can give counseling to them also whenever they come we are not giving to give them punishment we are going to give them counseling we are going to uh, give them a proper piece of uh, mind to them and wisdom to them how can they proceed so if they bring their problem to us we are going to assure them that we are going to help them think properly so campuses should declare a zero tolerance stance towards sexual harassment on the basis of anybody's male or female or other sex he she or other should not be harassed these are the references which i have used and especially uh, i have made my presentation from training of faculty in the knowledge system guidelines for incorporating in this now in the last 15 minutes our floor is open for a uh, discussion also and you see if you look at this image now the floor is open for discussion what do you see in this image 
Is it a stereotype or dismantling a stereotype? Anyone? Can you please reply? Dismantling a stereotype, ma'am. Uh, who are you? Please let me know. Uh, ma'am, it's uh, I'm Kavita Singh. And uh, I teach here in uh, Srimati Vidhi Jain Gulf PG College, Agra. Good. Uh, uh, ma'am, 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 am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, this is Dr. Hasibur Rahman, madam, HNB Garwal Central University. May I ask, ma'am, something? Uh, yes, yes, sure. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, actually, uh, uh, I'm listening to you, uh, uh, I mean, from your almost from your first slide and and what i uh, perceive so far mm, uh, when you're looking the uh, your gender lens in the societal context when you look so uh, so uh, uh, so very specific label or at at, at a, a generalized level uh, your entire presentation posit very much uh, uh, i mean gender biased okay uh, ma'am, uh, I mean, I mean, it is what why I'm saying it. it uh, there are very uh, limited number of literature or uh, study has done so far where the male gender, up to what extent, victimized because of the female. We had, we we actually don't have such a literature even. Okay, but it is fact in the society. Mm -hmm. And what I missed, ma'am, uh, on an entire presentation, this part almost untouched. On, on your narration, on your presentation, on your expression so far, okay? So uh, as, a, as a female, as a female, I mean, where actually you stand and where actually your viewpoint stand? Yes, yes. I, I was talking about the stereotypes and I said that yes, there are so many stereotypes related to men as well. So when we address the binaries, we also address the, uh, the, the both the sexes both the genders we are addressing. Of course, there is limited uh, literature available because we see more harassment of uh, women in the society. So much literature is written on them. But we have now started receiving literature on harassment of men as well. So I don't think there's any dearth, and people have started looking uh, the recent manual that was released by Supreme Court. It talks about the agency of both men and women and even transgenders. So I don't think there's any dirt. We have people have started writing about their um, plights also, their challenges also, their complications also, as uh, in the society. So the society is changing their own uh, stereotypes as well. So I don't think so. There's dirt material, but of course I agree to your um, this thing, the understanding that lesser material is available. We need to sensitize more on that. Ma'am, ma just, just, just a small query. Uh, I mean, do you not think so? Ki our entire uh, perspective is very much stereotyped uh, to look the specific gender as a uh, as as so much harassed or so much victimized. Our our notion, social entire social science. I mean, gender mm -hmm. discourse or literature discourse. Okay. I mean, even your even your classroom example, whether Othello and Desdemona, in case of Othello and Desdemona, I mean, entire notion of gender looking are uh, so much, uh, so much biased or so much, I mean, uh, preoccupied. Do you not think so in the social science domain or literature domain? Yes, yes, you are right. It is, it is a little, uh, but because this is prevalent in society, because all literature is a social reflector whatever is happening in society. You see, this presentation will take uh, more than uh, one and a half, around one and a half hour. And if you look at NCVRB data, uh, so many women would have been molested outside in the society at every minute's rate. Every 20 minutes, there is a rape registered. And these are the uh, data of only registered cases. That's why this uh, sensitivity has emerged. This, uh, this discourse has actually emerged out of that only. Because we have lesser reflections on the other genders' harassment in society. But um, this fact cannot be, of course, negated. We have YC was that as well. And we have started looking at that uh, glance also. 
so uh, right uh, this is also okay ma'am thank you thank you ma'am thank you the uh, major part of it was based on the uh, equitable justice given to women um anyone else um because uh, i just wanted to uh, give you uh, one or two more such images yes it is dismantling who said it this image was also uh, ma'am yes uh, ma'am uh, may i talk to you in hindi main hindi mein bol sakti hu kyun nahi bol sakti हाँ मैम मैं ये कहना चाह रही थी एक्चुअली सर ने अभी जैसा कहा कि आ, जो मेन का जो हरासमेंट होता है व्हाई इट इज लेस डॉक्यूमेंटेड और व्हाई वी टॉक कंपेरेटिवली लेस अबाउट दीज थिंग्स तो मैम ये कहना है कि uh, <laughs> एक तो सोसाइटी लेवल फैक्ट वाइज भी जाए डेटा वाइज भी देखे तो मतलब नंबर ऑफ वीमेन हु गॉट सब्जेक्टेड टू सच मतलब इस तरह की पेट्री आर की को जो वो सब्जेक्ट हो रही हैं और मतलब दे जनरली uh, हम अपने आप को यही कर देते हैं मतलब समर्पित कर देते हैं इस तरह के ट्रीटमेंट को लेकर के तो मेरे कहने का मैम दो अभी रिसेंट एग्जाम्पल्स जो मेरे माइंड में आ रहे हैं uh, हो सकता है कि थोड़ा पार्शियल भी हो Uh, लेकिन मैं ये कहना चाहूंगी मैम एक ज्योति सिंह का कोई केस आया था मैम वाराणसी के अराउंड तो उसमें uh, मैम उसके बाद इतना बहुत हो हल्ला मचा कि वो एक्चुअली उसका वो एक्स्ट्रा मराइटल अफेयर था या कुछ इस तरह का था मैम तो उसमें फिर यहाँ पे मैम जो मेरे यहाँ जो डोमेस्टिक हेल्प आती है और भी दो चार इस तरह के जो लोग बहुत लिटरेट नहीं है वो लोग भी उस केस के बारे में जान रहे थे और वो भी अब बहुत ओपिनियटेड होके बोल रहे थे कि हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल नहीं पढ़ाना चाहिए अपनी वाइफ को देखो ऐसे कर रही हैं और मैम एक ये केस हुआ और रिसेंट में मैम बिहार में अपॉइंटमेंट हुई है जिस स्टेट से मैं अभी बोल रही हूँ तो मैम वहाँ पे यहाँ पे मैम वुमेन को रिजर्वेशन है जॉब्स में और काफी मतलब वो रेट ज्यादा है और लोकल वीमेन को भी शायद 35 परसेंट या इस तरीके से है तो काफी वीमेन जो है वो सेलेक्ट होकर के बिहार टीचर में आई हैं तो मैम अभी आजकल एक ये चला हुआ है फेसबुक पे कि लोग कह रहे हैं कि हस्बैंड अगर जॉब मतलब अगर कर रहा है लड़की अगर अशिक्षित भी रहती है तो मतलब लड़का कर लेता है शादी लेकिन अभी इतनी लड़कियों का सिलेक्शन हुआ है तो क्या वो आ, मतलब बिना जॉब वाले लड़के से वो देख एक भी लड़की शादी नहीं करेगी जितनी जितनों को नौकरी मिली है तो मैम ये जो इस तरीके का है तो मैम इसके लिए जिम्मेदार कौन है इस तरीके की स्टीडियो टाइपिंग के लिए आ, कौन कौन जिम्मेदार है मैम कि अगर कोई लड़की क्यों नहीं डेयर कर पा रही है कि किसी चलो ठीक है मैं जॉब में हूँ तो अगर जो मेरा काउंटर पार्ट मेरा हस्बैंड जो है या जिसको मैं वुड भी हस्बैंड है उस, वो अगर नहीं भी कहीं जॉब कर रहा है तो मैं क्यों नहीं कर सकती इस तरीके का तो मैम इस तरह की स्टीडियो टाइपिंग को कौन इतने लंबे समय तक किन लोगों ने खींच रखा है उसके लिए क्या औरतें जिम्मेदार है या पुरुष भी जिम्मेदार है ये मैम मेरा कहना था मैंने जब शुरू किया था तो स्टीडियो टाइप का बहुत टाइम लगाया था बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है उन्हीं को चेंज और चैलेंज करना और उसके एजेंट्स भी बहुत हैं उसको सेंसिटाइज करने वाले लोग भी बहुत हैं तो वो शुरू हो जाता है जो सोसाइटी में जो प्रचार की चल रही है और जो उसमें रिलीजन भी है रीजन भी है इथॉस भी है कल्चर भी है अब आपने यहाँ देखा इस इवेंट में शी इज वेयरिंग हिजाब एंड शी इज यूजिंग टेक्नोलॉजी रास्ते में रुक कर वो स्कूटर भी चला रही है म्यूजिक भी सुन रही है तो जो हमारे प्री कंसीव नोशन है अबाउट सच ब्रोकन एंड यू विल वंडर दैट इवन माय डॉटर ऑब्जर्व अबाया शी वेयर्स अ स्कार्फ एंड शी इज मेट्रोपॉलिटन मजिस्ट्रेट इन डेरी आई रिमेन लाइक दिस बोथ ऑफ अस को एग्जिस्ट शी हैज नेवर टोल्ड मी एनी वी बोथ बिलीव इन द सेम मुस्लिमनेस शी कैरीज हरसेल्फ इन दैट वे आई कैरी माय सेल्फ इन दैट सो you see we have to through our actions words and deeds dismantle this uh, stereotypical understandings about anything ki ye if somebody is in hijab to wo oppressed hi hogi wo kahi bahar uski mobility hi nahi hogi aisa kuch nahi hai ya aur bhi kuch hamare zehn mein hai ki a woman cannot be a plumber or a male cannot be a musician to ye jo sab cheeze hain this all is uh, stereotypically created uh, uh, i hope that is what i was trying to help you understand that uh, try to connect with the students in this way uh, so that they can understand properly thank you ma'am thank you this session was actually very eye opener for us 
we learned a lot of new things we know uh, i didn't give a lecture it was something which directly yeah, from my you, uh, somewhere you persuaded us to do something pos some positive things and especially as far as language is concerned aur ye cheez to hai mam ki language what we use on a daily basis wo kahin na kahin hamari psychology ko bhi impact karta hai undeniably uh, thank you mam uh, aap se agar kisi ka aur koi observation hai to main lekar ek choti si ek minute ki kahani suna kar aap se बता दूंगी अगर कोई और है तो पूछना है या कोई कमेंट है आपका या ऑब्जर्वेशन है योर फीडबैक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस बिकॉज मैंने शुरू से कहा वी बिलोंग टू डिफरेंट जनरेशन सो वी आर कनेक्टिंग विद डिफरेंट जनरेशन डॉट्स बाय कनेक्टिंग विद यू एंड बिफोर लीविंग यू ऑल बिकॉज आई मे नॉट बी एबल टू कनेक्ट विद This is the small story, Nitesh and Sushma. Please switch off your mic. Uh, there is a very small story that the uh, students' diversity is related. Hai, that uh, a teacher or a guru ji who uh, in, I mean with whom two students have completed their education, and on the last day, like we have convocations. so he called uh, student number 1 ke aaj aapki khatam ho gayi education ab aapka aakhri exam hai go to my cottage uh wahan par there is a bird in a in a cage cut the head of the bird and bring it to me he suddenly went to the cottage cut the head of the bird and brought to the guru ji guru ji ne kaha acha theek hai hum result baad mein batayenge and then second day he gave the same task to the second student go to my cottage cut the head of the bird and bring it to me that second student did not come for a week for months all together and after few months he came holding the bird in the lap and saying guru ji maine iska sir kaatne ki har jagah koshish ki open fields mein main le gaya ise lekin kahin na kahin se koi awaaz aati hai jo kehti hai ये गलत है आपको क्या लगता है ये आवाज सिलेबस की किताबों से आती है नहीं ये आवाज संस्कारों से भी आती है और ये आवाज तो सारी आपका जो एजुकेशन का जो जिस्ट है जो आपने लिया है उससे आती है एंड आई कुड नॉट कट द हेड ऑफ द वर्ड सर मैं फेल हो गया गुरु जी बिकेम ओवरवेल विट माई डियर यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द रियल मीनिंग ऑफ एजुकेशन जो उस मद्रास वाले स्टूडेंट ने नहीं समझा था जैसे ही गुरु जी ने कहा उनकी वाइफ का उसने मर्डर करने में उनकी मदद कर दी बट दिस स्टूडेंट हैव स्पेशल अब हमें देखना है कि हम किस तरह की डाइवर्सिटी में किस टाइप के स्टूडेंट्स बनाएंगे योर जनरेशन ऑफ टीचर्स हैज मेनी चैलेंजेस मोर चैलेंजेस देन आर जनरेशन ऑफ बट द सेकंड टाइप ऑफ कंपैशनेट स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव रियली अंडरस्टूड द मीनिंग ऑफ एजुकेशन द वैल्यू ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड कैन डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन राइट एंड रॉन्ग कैन रेजिस्ट अगेंस्ट समथिंग रॉन्ग आर गोइंग टू बी द रियल यू नो डाइवर्सिटी तो ये डाइवर्सिटी जो हम अनइंटेंशनली क्रिएट कर रहे हैं ये हमारे लिए बहुत सेंसिटिव है टू थिंक अबाउट दैट एंड टू फाइनली वर्क ऑन दैट आई होप यू ऑल विल वर्क ऑन मेकिंग सेकंड टाइप ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स हु विल बी ग्रेट एसेट टू सोसाइटी ऑल द बेस्ट टू यू ऑल फॉर अ ग्रेट करियर अहेड थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू मैम thank you aapka thank you ma'am aapka your participants ji dear participants if you have any question that is the last minute you can ask to ma'am so that she can leave now participant tarandar sir i think ma'am there is no question at all so i would request to thank you very much ma'am for your 
uh, nice deliberations. Uh, I was with you also, and I was listening. It was very, it was it was very remarkable, and I will say tremendous type uh, your lecture was there. Actually, in this period of time, when the gender gender sensitization and uh, gender discrimination is uh, increasing very fast in our society. With these words, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. अच्छे से पिछले वाले में बहुत से पार्टिसिपेंट